Well, we welcome to another Bible Truth Facebook YouTube broadcast. I'm Evangelist Tom Gillum. I'm an itinerant evangelist. Please an expositional preaching. I like to do it line upon line, precept upon precept. I like to do it in a serious form. I like to do it with enthusiasm. It's a joy to have you here today on the broadcast. I hope you'll have a Bible handy. Hope you'll have a notebook, something to write with. Find our text today in the book of 1 Thessalonians and uh, chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Uh, we have been preaching uh, through this book now for some time. And uh, we want to bring some concluding thoughts today, if we could, from 1 Thessalonians. Uh, this is the 17th broadcast from this book. And uh, hopefully on our next broadcast, we want to begin to look at some great people from the past and uh, preach on the subject, is there any among us like these? But today we want to conclude, we have noticed a little key that would unlock this book is in First Thessalonians, and uh, in each chapter it is mentioned the coming of the Lord. Paul mentions it five times, and uh, the little word coming that he uses is the coming of a king or the coming of royalty, and uh, in chapter 1 and verse 10 he speaks of waiting for the king. And uh, so we've been preaching in these days on while waiting for the king. And uh, Paul gives us some ideas of what to do while we wait. Chapter number one, he gave the words of confidence for waiting. The circumstances of life will erode our confidence. Paul gives us some ideas about a word to bolster our confidence. Chapter number two, there was the witness of courage for waiting. Oftentimes we'll get discouraged and uh, uh, faint-hearted. And Paul said to share your faith, it'll bolster your courage. Chapter number three, he shared with us the way of conclusion for waiting. If we want to make sure we conclude right, we better make sure we're on the right way. Then in chapter number four, he dealt with the walk of circumspect for waiting. He said, while we're waiting, we want to make sure we're walking very carefully. Then in chapter number five, we've been dealing with the subject of the coming of the Lord. As Paul dealt with the watch of concentration for waiting, making sure our eyes are fixed upon him. Paul gives us some ideas about this uh, watch of concentration. It would uh, uh, involve the watch of day. And then we found that it would involve the watch of duty. And uh, today I want to bring a couple of concluding thoughts about this watch of concentration. If we're going to wait properly, we want to have our eyes fixed upon him. The old songwriter said, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. The things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. In chapter number five, I notice in verse 16, there is the watch of devotion. Uh, the watch of devotion. A proper devotion will really enhance our concentration. He deals here with our devotions towards him, towards the Lord. And he says, first of all, rejoice evermore. That little word rejoice means to be cheerful, to have the chin up. It has the idea of putting a smile on when everything is screaming to frown. It also has the idea of spinning around like a top while giving him loud words of adoration and praise. I thought it was interesting right here in our devotion towards him he mentions a trilogy they usually are mentioned together. It is rejoice, pray, and give thanks. Oh, our devotion towards him should involve rejoicing. Then he said to pray without ceasing, pray without intermission, pray without a break. 
uh, we are reminded today that Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He ever liveth to make intercession for us. For the last 2,000 years, all he has done is pray. Oh, Andrew Murray said, if we want to be like him, we will have for ourselves a life of unending prayer. Pray without ceasing. Then he says in verse 18, in everything give thanks. I thought it was interesting. He didn't say for everything give thanks, but he said in everything. If I go today and the doctor tells me I'm eat up with cancer, I'm not going to shout all over the all. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for the cancer. No, but in that situation, I can give thanks. How come? Because Paul said in verse 18, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Is that not the, the model prayer? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. My expectations are from thee. One of the greatest things that we can do is to accept what God sends that the will of heaven is being done in our lives upon the earth. And for that, we can give thanks. And when we do, it enhances our concentration while we wait. Then he says that our devotion toward him in verse 19, quench not the spirit. That little word has the idea to resist, to have things in our life that counteracts him. It has the idea of throwing water upon the flames of the altar of worship in our lives. Oh, uh, if we're going to have the proper devotions towards him, we need to rejoice, we need to pray, we need to give thanks, and we need to guard our life against anything that would put the fire out of worship in our life. Also, this devotion towards him, verse 20 said, despise not prophesying. That little word prophesying is proclaiming or the proclamation of truth. Despise means to count it as unimportant. I tell you, if you're going to do with anything down at the house of God, if you've got too much going on in the service, do away with everything but not the preaching. Uh, let it be paramount and is of most important. He says in verse 22, in the very God, uh, abstain from all appearances of evil. Hold to that which is good. Abstain is distance yourself. Get as far away from evil as you possibly can. That is our devotions towards him. But also in this text, he gives us his dividends towards us. He says in verse 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. That little word holy means to be well, be complete, no matter the circumstances. The old boy that lost his two girls in the Atlantic Ocean there on the ship, he asked the captain to point out to him where their ship sank. It was there he penned the words, no matter whatever my lot is, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. There, uh, his concentration was upon him, and the God of peace was sanctifying him wholly, and he was finding it to be well. He says in verse 24, faithful is he that calleth you. That is not a general call, but an effectual call. That is not a natural call, but a supernatural call. The one who has called you supernaturally, called you effectually, he said he's faithful, and he will also do it. As Paul said in Philippians, he that hath begun a good work in you, he will do it and complete it and finish the work. That should help us to stay constant traded upon him. Then last of all, not only is there uh, the watch of uh, devotions and, and uh, there is the watch of the day and uh, there is the, the watch of, uh, 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 of duty, but then there is the watch of desire. Uh, Paul mentions our desire from the brethren. He said in verse 25, brethren, pray for us. Paul's desire was that folks pray for him. It is my desire. If you're listening to this broadcast, pray for me. If I can ever pray for you, email me, tbgillum at aol.com. I, I would love to pray for you. Put you on my prayer list. Paul's desire was pray 
for me. He says in verse 26, greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I don't suggest to go to church Sunday morning and kiss all the brethren, certainly not kiss any of the women. Uh, but there is that intimacy uh, amongst the body of believers. There is that closeness. Paul's desire for the brethren was that closeness, that family spirit. Oftentimes I find myself to be more closer with the folks uh, in the body of Christ, the family of God, than I do my own family. And uh, so it should be. Then he said in verse 27, I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read Unto all the holy brethren, Paul said, I want this book to be read publicly. You know, I cannot overemphasize the need in this hour to publicly read the Word of God. When I pastored for some 18 years here in Athens, Georgia, I, I used to love to publicly, we would read through books to begin a service. We'd read a little bit each service till we got through a book. Oh, it's so important to uh, put forth to the visitors that come in that the Word of God is of paramount importance in this place. And the, the folks that attend their regular members, that they would know this is the Word of God and is so important to us. Not only is there a desire from the brethren, but there is a desire for the brethren. He closes out the book in verse 28. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Paul began this book in chapter 1 in verse 1. Grace be unto you. Paul has sandwiched between two pieces of gigantic grace truths about the coming of the Lord. And if we're going to wait properly, It'll take a double portion of the grace of God uh, if we are to have confidence while we're waiting, if we're to have the right conclusion, if we're to show courage, if we're to walk circumspect, if we're to stay concentrated, it will take all of grace will be our story. I'm reminded in closing today of this study the old songwriter said, some glorious morning sorrows will cease. Some glorious morning all will be peace. Heartaches all ended, school days all gone. Heaven will open, Jesus will come. Oh, what a meeting in the sky. No tears, no crying shall dim the eyes. Loved ones united eternally. Oh, what a daybreak that will be. Then the old songwriter said, some glorious daybreak, Jesus will come. Some golden daybreak, that holds all one. He'll shout the victory, break through the blue. Some golden daybreak, for you, for me. Lord, help us to wait properly today. It's been a joy to have you on the broadcast again today. Remind you of our study website, TomGillum.com. Weekly Bible studies, daily devotional page, audio page, TomGillum.com. Come there and study the Word of God online with us. We'd love to have you. Remember our new study. Is any among us like this on our next broadcast? Thanks for listening.